You guys remember Ben 10 Omniverse? You know, the Ben 10 series that radically changed the art style and made all the fans upset. That is until they rebooted Ben 10 and radically changed the art style and the writing and made the fans really upset. And it kind of just made the entire fan base go, you know, maybe Omniverse wasn't all that bad. I mean, well, clearly Omniverse wasn't all that hated seeing as it had eight seasons. But then again, I suppose any Ben 10 series will have several seasons because there is Ben 10 fans. But did you know that in season four, episode one of Ben 10 Omniverse in an episode called TGIS, thank God it's Saturday, there's a crossover between Ben 10 and The Secret Saturdays. There are no Chupacabra sightings as of yet. You hear that? It's coming from that clearing. You know, I was pretty sure the voice actors would change, but it's just such a drastic shift when I'm making this video immediately after watching all of the original Secret Saturdays. They run into Ben and holy crap, Zack grew up. So they're tracking chupacabras, and turns out they may not be aliens and actually be chupacabras. And Ben and Zack know each other and they've heard of each other, which I think is neat. I don't know why, but the whole, oh my gosh, Grandpa Max told me about you. Just, it makes the world feel a lot more alive. And Ben 10 and the Secret Saturdays both feel like they could inhabit the same world. Well, I suppose this kind of confirms that they do inhabit the same world. But you know, like, you know what I mean? It's not like Billy and Mandy and the kids next door. That one just seemed a little awkward. It was really cool, but still felt weird. This one, on the other hand, feels like a very seamless crossover. They find some cryptid slash alien that was turned to stone and take him to the airship to try and cure him. And this is my mom. <laughs> Hold on one minute. As much as I empathize with Ben going sheet-faced, seeing this cosmic cryptid goddess, where is her black upper lip? I understand needing to change up the design to fit the show, but the black upper lip is where I draw the line. Garbage. Zero out of 10, negative one out of 10. I cannot believe they would ruin the characters like this. What were they thinking? I'm done, we're done, I'm done. Okay, fine. Let's see what happens. But let's be very clear here. I think it's a little weird how they designed Zack's mom to look like a 20 something year old woman, you know, with a ponytail as if she's going out jogging on the sidewalk near the beach in California. I wanted a mil- Meeting you is the good. <laughs> right back at ya. Dude, that's my mom. And your mom is hot. And the Chupacabra's attack. <laughs> Yeah, I like Zack. Who's controlling you? Uh, I had a feeling they would do this. Okay, listen, if you didn't watch my show covering literally the entirety of The Secret Saturdays, that of which you should link the somewhere, Zack lost all of his power, spoiler alert, Zack lost all of his powers at the very end of the show. He can no longer commune with cryptids in any way. Vivi Argos literally sucked it out of him, but it is so memorable to Zack's character, I kind of fully expected them to bring it back. I'm not surprised, I'm just disappointed. Especially since in this episode, Zack tells Ben that Argos is dead and does a nice little quick summary of the final episode to catch everyone else who hasn't watched the series up to speed. But just like backpedaling like this? I'm disappointed in you, man of action. Writers, the writers in Man of Action, whatever. How do you, how do I address Man of Action? To no one's surprise, Dr. Animo is the one controlling the Chupacabras and... Welcome back. Greetings, Ambiombre. What? I'm reanimated, not death. What do you mean, reanimated? From the looks of it, you imploded due to unstable physics. Now, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a physicist, theoretical, or not theoretical, but I feel like if you screw with physics and you mess it up, there is no coming back from that. I gave you the blueprints for this machine before my unfortunate run-in with Zack Saturday. Oh yeah, for sure, uh-huh. You just so happened to know Dr. Animo and had a plan for this? Sure, sure. We need some explanation as to why you're back. Let's just skip over the actual science as to how he brought you back and focus on the plot, why don't we? Speaking of explanations, they do address how Zax has some powers. He thought he lost them, but apparently there's some quote unquote residual mystical blah, blah, blah. And also they fight Argost. They track down where Animo is hiding and do a pseudoscience 
Ultimate's explanation as to how Zack got his powers back, and how Argos is back, and blah blah blah. It doesn't make any sense, and isn't important. Essentially, they used alien life force and cryptid life force, and when Argos imploded, there was a shockwave of some sort and channeled his powers back to Zack, at least a teeny tiny bit or something or other, something along those lines. I mean, I guess enough time has passed. They said it's been three years since the events of the fast, the fast, the final episode of The Secret Saturday. So I guess Zack has had time to relearn what small amount of powers he still has. And in classic Argos fashion, they find him attacking the airship with an army of cryptids because he still has his powers, of course. If I could cross you with an owl man, it would be the bee's knees. Yeah, like the owl man from that one episode. <laughs> that was a reference. And it's still not Mothman. Is Mothman copywritten or something? Why haven't they used that yet? More pseudoscience. Apparently Argos's Frankenstein body runs on cryptid life force from those cryptids cut off that life force and his body shuts down, I guess? Out of all the weird uh, pseudoscience they've had, this is the one that really doesn't make sense. And Komodo, the invisible Komodo dragon, stops Animo's mind control of the Chupacabras, so that's one problem down. And Ben just... Hmm, <clears throat> electrocutes Argos in order to shut him down? I guess. Oh, and then he launches all that life force energy out of him. Or something. Again, it... It doesn't make sense. Well, it's been great saving the world with you. And your mom. Yeah, we should hang out. At your place. With your mom. Maybe when she's not working. Maybe just your mom. It's only one episode, so the resolution comes pretty quick. They dedicated a lot of time in this just catching everyone up who hasn't watched Secret Saturdays. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a large amount of people who watched Ben 10 and just assumed the Secret Saturdays was an original group created for the sake of Ben 10 Omniverse when they are wrong. And also a lot of the episode was explaining how Argos came back and how Zack's powers came back and etc. etc. The whole episode felt clunky, but it kind of needed to be clunky. I appreciate them adding the Saturdays to give the fans a fun little callback. It's adorable. Was it all that satisfying? No, not really, but I'm glad they did it anyway. And Cartoon Network has always been really good at doing crossovers. And for what it was, I think the episode wasn't bad, but it was definitely lacking, you know? And a lot of the jokes was just Ben drooling over Zack's mom, which I fully understand. However, the critic in me is telling me that we're just using her looks for bad jokes. We are degrading her character to the lowest common denominator, and it's a bit, it's a little bit insulting. Now I understand some of you may point the finger at me and go, didn't you just make a joke like that? Yes, I understand. However, this is the internet. Completely different platform, completely different rules, completely different expectations from me. You come on here for funny ha-has and maybe some fun, thought-provoking ideas. I don't know. The majority of you come on here for funny ha-has. When I watch TV shows, or when you watch TV shows like Ben 10, sometimes it's a little bit for funny ha-has, but also for an actual freaking story. I am horny on Maine, and I don't even hide it. But that's somewhat sort of a little bit expected of me. It is not expected of writers of children's TV shows, even though there is a surprising amount of them that are, and it is a very concerning cough cough victorious. But at least I recognize there's a lot more to Drew's character than just hot, 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 hot. I just wish there was another crossover that of which I could cover in this ep video so that I can pad out more time for content because this video is incredibly short as of right now. <gasps> oh wait! Season 8, Episode 8, Ben is chilling and ignoring his girlfriend. The next contestant is... Ben Tennyson! I feel like you're breaking a lot of laws. Well then again, I don't know space laws, so what do I know? You know that hypothetical of if you were in a room with all of your exes? That's sort, it's sort of like that. He summons every girl he knows and they apparently gotta compete to become Ben's new girlfriend. Let the competition begin! <laughs> Did you see? Did you see it? Right there, there she is. See? This is an official crossover now. Now I can add it to the video and talk about it. So they all get teleported to participate in competitions and there she is again, ha ha! Next they gotta fit through oddly shaped holes in a wall as it moves toward, well, hang on. I've seen this before. Obviously Drew makes it with, oh. Oh, well never mind. I guess. Oh, hold on. 
She's out of the competition. Um, well, I guess I should have expected this seeing as she's married and the writers wouldn't allow her to win, but um, do I end the video now? No, I need more content. Let's keep going. Eventually the challenge is just to not die. And Ben is allowed to jump in and save everyone, thank goodness too, because Ben wasn't able to do anything. It was feeling kind of weird. Wait, why? Why are so many of these people competing? A lot of them don't, well, some of them don't even like Ben. What is the prize they get with all this craziness other than they get to marry Ben? Like, are the writers just assuming like, ah, uh, yeah, you put a bunch of girls together and they're gonna fight because women I mean, it's not explicitly stated. I understand that I don't think that's really what's going on. It's just, if you had to interpret it, that is like the way I would interpret it. I'm pretty sure the writers were just like, yeah, here's the plot. We, we need them to fight. And so they're gonna fight because we need them to. And that's it. The majority of the episode is not going to be dedicated to explaining why they're going to fight. The majority of the episode is, is focusing on Ben struggling with his current girlfriend and his ex-girlfriend. And this is a way for them to sort of kind of get back together, blah, 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 blah. And all the other reasons are in the background and nobody cares. Fair enough, however. I still feel like it's a little bit wrong. And then when Ben tells everyone to team up and stop fighting each other, the MC has a little tantrum because the game isn't spicy enough and then he just takes people out. I'm liking him a lot less. Next is the final competition, a race. It ends with a tie and the MC lets Ben choose who loses and the loser actually gets a paid vacation. So I don't know, maybe I'd wanna lose too. And Ben can't choose and he sends Esther away. But Kai, who just won, doesn't really like Ben and doesn't want to marry him. Then Ben realizes, oh, he, he, he can't contact Esther, which means they're all sent to the Null Void. So the guy just snaps and then teleports them into the Null Void and I'm getting kind of scared at how powerful the MC is. Like, gosh, wait, there's Drew again. I knew we see more of this crossover. And the episode ends with all the girls teaming up to fight. Oh, wait, there's a portal out of there. It's all good. Anyway, uh, we get a nice cathartic ending where they put the MC to sleep and has to be bored in his dream as a punishment where he's powerless and starts going crazy, just like a hero would do. Wow, what an exciting crossover with Ben 10 and totally worth sitting through those two episodes, seeing as both of them were completely related to Secret Saturdays, right? Can you tell I thought this video would be more substantial with the first episode and that it turned out, then it really turned out to be and then I was struggling to get content? I'm doing the best I can. Anyway, if you want to send me fan art, tag me at at negative underscore legend on either Twitter or Instagram. And I have a Patreon where you can get monthly stickers and trading cards. Tell me what you thought of the crossovers and the just des design changes in the comments below. Stay beautiful, keep playing.